I believe God has a word that He's going to talk to us tonight. So with all that being said, I want to give honor where honor is due. I want to thank my parents for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. It's a great privilege and a great honor. I'm so thankful to be here. It's a beautiful Sunday evening, evening, and God is with us. The Bible says that when there's two or three or more gathered in His name, there will be in the midst of them. So I believe Jesus is here, and He's wanting to do a great work, and He's wanting to touch our lives and our spirits and our hearts. And I'm just looking forward for what God is going to do. But before we get into the Word of God, we're going to pray that God will have His way, that He would help us tonight, and that He would speak to us. So let's all pray, Lord Jesus, we thank You for this day. We thank You for this opportunity to be in Your house. God, we pray that Your Spirit will move upon us. God, that You would help us to receive Your Word as You want us to receive it. God, let it be not my words, but God, I pray that Your Word will come alive and change us, God, and challenge us, God, so we can live here different in the same way we came in here. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. 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 So good to be here. We're going to go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 9. And then we're going to read from verse 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark chapter 9. And we're going to go down to verse number 23. And then we're going to read 24. And God is going to speak to us and help us. Mark 9 and 23. <clears throat> the Bible tells us, And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are passable, are passable to him that believeth. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with, with tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Help my unbelief. From this short moment that I have with you all today, I would like to talk to you guys. You have to believe that God will take care of you. Amen. You have to believe that God will take care of you. In this great chapter of Mark chapter 9, we find a father that had a son that he was, the son had a spirit on him. And so the father is looking for Jesus, Jesus to come help him because the son had a spirit on him. And the, the, the apostles, the disciples could not catch the spirit out of him. And so Jesus comes on the scene and the first thing, the first word that he begins to tell him, he said, all this faithless generation. He was basically saying that what happened to this generation that used to believe and the disciples are right there, they can't get the spirit out. And he said, all this faithless generation, like what happened to your faith? What happened that you believed, but now you are not believing as much as you used to? And, and there was something that was happening in that place and, and Jesus comes on the scene. He said, bring the son unto me. And the father goes on, he brings his son and Jesus begins to heal the son and to be able to cast out the spirit that was on the son. And, 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 but Jesus said to the father that if you can just believe, anything is possible to you that believe it. Amen. And the father looks at Jesus and says, Jesus, I believe. But then he goes on and he becomes transparent and he becomes honest and he becomes true. He said, there's a part of me that believes, but there's also another part of me that's unbelief. And he was honest enough to say, Jesus, I know I believe, but there's a part of me that don't believe, and I need you to help me with my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in our life, we can walk with Jesus, see Jesus do great things, but then sometimes there's part of us that just don't really believe like we used to believe. Mm -hmm. We used to believe that God can heal, and that God can set people free, and that God can change somebody's heart. But because of the life and circumstances, we come to a place where we just don't believe as quiet as we used to. And, and, and Jesus was, a, he was, he changed everything. He changed the course of how people view life. There was a, an angel came to Mary and the angel Gabriel told Mary that don't be afraid. There's gonna be a son that, that is born out of you. And this son, you should call him Jesus. And the angel began to tell Mary that this son, the way he's going to be born, is going to be supernatural. Mm -hmm. Because it's not going to be you and Joseph that match the baby and the baby comes alive. But the angel began to tell Mary that God is going to be with you 
and the boy you're gonna give birth to is gonna be from a virgin birth and so but Jesus we know Jesus doing miracles but before Jesus can do the miracles he literally had to become the miracle mm -hmm. he became the miracle himself so we can believe that he can perform miracles mm -hmm. so Jesus comes out of a virgin Mary and, and, and the angel tells Mary I will, God will be with you mm -hmm. through all of those that you're gonna go through there's gonna be people that talk about you how did you have a son and you didn't have it with Joseph and you there's how did this happen? But God was letting Mary know that God would take care of Mary. Yeah. And so Mary was put in a position where she had to believe the impossible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God would take his people and take his children and put you into a place where you can believe that God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is life happens to all of us. Life comes to anybody. If the life doesn't care if you're a young boy or if you're a grown man or whatever age you are, whatever you are in the world, life will happen to you. But if you can believe that God can take care of you, God will take care of you. Amen. So the angel comes to Amen. Mary and tell Mary, you're going to give a virgin birth to Jesus. And Jesus will become the savior of the people. He will save the people from sins and he will begin to heal and deliver people. And from that moment, Mary started walking and knowing that God is taking care of her. But Mary did not see everything in the future. She just knew and lived in the moment. And she understood that if I walk, God is going to be with me. The Bible tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes you might not see where you are going. Sometimes you might not see where you are heading. But if you can just believe that God is with you, as you walk by, God will open doors and he will take care of every situation. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is most people, I want to know what's going to happen 20 years from now. I want to know what's going to happen 30 years from now. That's how our nature stands. That's how our brain works. But if God doesn't really want you to look that far. If, you, if God can get you to a place where you can believe now, God can do something great in you now. God can do a miracle in you now. And God can set you free now. But God will take care of you. So in all of those that Mary went through, Mary had to believe that God would take care of her. And so the father comes back, the son is right there. God begins to heal the son. But the father says, God, I need you to help my unbelief. So in this moment, if you don't believe as much as you used to, and you don't pray as much as you used to pray, and you don't sacrifice, and you don't give to God what you used to give him, Today's a good day. Today's a great day to start again. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to beat yourself up and be like, I failed. I'm never going to try again. Mm -hmm. The Bible let us know that a righteous man, this is a righteous man. A righteous man falls down seven times, mm -hmm. but he gets back up again. Mm -hmm. So you can fall down seven times and you can still get up again. Mm -hmm. The power is not in you falling. The power is, can you get up? Mm -hmm. Can you try again? Can you mm -hmm. pray again? Mm -hmm. So today, if you have, you have to get up from where you are mm -hmm. and God will hold your hand and mm -hmm. take you the rest of the way. Because you cannot do this on your own. You cannot live life on yourself. You need the help of God to help you. Amen. And so, Jesus begins to grow up out of Mary and he goes to do great things. He healed the blind and resurrected people from the dead. And he's doing all these great things. And there had to come a moment where Jesus had to be crucified and Jesus had to die for everybody's sin. So they took Jesus, he had a cross on him, and he goes out up to Calvary. Mm -hmm. And Jesus begins to die and shed blood on his body, and there was blood all over the place. And, and people would watch him, and some people were excited that he was dying, and some people were weeping. There was all type of emotions going on that day. And they can see Jesus on the cross is dying, and, and there was no life in him. Some, everything is coming out of him, and he's dying on the cross. And, and Jesus, his disciples, some are hiding, and some are not there to be found. And Mary is there weeping. And Jesus, it is this day he knew how to come. And, but the Bible tells us that for the joy that was set before him, he was able to endure the pain of the cross. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's something in the future that you've got to believe that God is going to be in your future. So now you might not feel it in the moment, the struggles and the things that you're going through now. Mm -hmm. But if you can just believe that God will take care of you, you can get through the hardest moments in your life. You can get through the struggles and you can get through everything that might be coming your way. If you can just believe that God will take care of you. So Jesus is dying on the cross and he, he ended up dying and, and, and there was a great silence that day. And everybody thought he was dead and, and he was dead. He truly died. But three days later, Jesus was resurrected from the dead with all power and all authority. And all, he came back to his disciples that sent him. But when Jesus came back, he just, he, Thomas was not there. The disciples was in the room. He comes into the room. They see Jesus. 
Thomas was not in the room. And so in John, in John 20, the book of John 20, 20 and 24, John 20 and 24, the Bible tells us, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Dinamans, was not with them when Jesus came. So Thomas was in the, not in the room when Jesus was there. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and throw his hand into his side, I will not believe. So Thomas was saying that I know you've seen Jesus, I know you've seen him. But Thomas is in the moment, in the room, he's seen Jesus now. And he said, until I feel the finger in, the, in his nails and, and the side of his side, I will not believe. And, and the Bible tells us in verse 25, the other disciples said unto him, we have seen him. In verse 26, and after eight days, after eight days, again his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, he said, Take your finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Mm -hmm. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus tells Thomas that since you don't want to believe, take your hand, put it on my side so you can feel the pain and you can feel that I really resurrected from the dead. So Thomas put his finger there and he realized that Jesus really died. And he said, My Lord and my God. Amen. In verse 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because they have seen me, they have believed. So Jesus is telling Thomas, you've seen me, I, let you get, I gave you the proof, now you believe. Mm -hmm. But he goes on to say, blessed are they that have not sinned mm -hmm. and yet have believed. Mm -hmm. And so he begins to tell Thomas, I know you did not believe at first, but now you believe. And, and that's great because the reality is most people want proof. I want, to, want no proof of what really just happened. But Jesus goes on to say, it's way bigger than what you can see. He goes on to tell him, you have sinned and you believe. Mm -hmm. But blessed are they that have not sinned, mm -hmm. but yet believe. Amen. And that's where Amen. we come in in the picture. Because if I went around asking everybody in here, have you seen Jesus face to face, the reality, mm -hmm. most of the answers would be, I have not seen Jesus. I did not see him face to face like the disciples walked with him. And they same feed the 5,000 and did the miracles and everything. They walked with Jesus. They have so much faith that he can do anything. But come to this day in the 21st century, if I went around asking everybody in this room, have you seen Jesus face to face? The reality is I have not seen him. Yes, we have felt him. Yes, we, we experienced him in our life and he's done great things. But we did not see him face to face. And, and Jesus was like, that's the blessing in that. Mm -hmm. There is a blessing in just believing when you have not sinned. Mm -hmm. And so he goes to tell Thomas that you believe because you've sinned. But the people that are going to be more blessed is those that have not seen me, but yet believed on me. Amen. So I want to let come here to stop and tell you that you have to believe that God will take care of you. You might be going through different seasons in your life, and yet you might have not seen God face to face. But you are blessed, and you are richly and more blessed. When you believe on God that you have not sinned, mm -hmm. but you can still believe that God will take care of you. Amen. So I wanted to, I, I felt this word in my spirit and I felt like to share with everybody in here today that you have to believe that God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. No matter what you go through in this life, you don't know what the future holds and what's coming up, mm -hmm. but you have to believe that God will take care of you. Yeah. And, and I felt that and I prayed that prayer and God led me to tell you today that you have to believe that God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to end this in prayer, but whatever you are dealing with that you are going through, mm -hmm. if you can just believe that God will take care of you. Mm -hmm. God took care of every man in the Bible that decided to walk with him. He took care of the woman, the child, and people that put their faith in him because he knew that if they can believe in him, they can go far in life. Mm -hmm. And if you can believe in Jesus, you can go far in life. Mm -hmm. Let's pray that God will help us. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this word that we have heard. God, I pray that you will take care of your children, that you will take care of your people. God, you put us on this earth not to leave us, but to walk with us. God, I pray that every day of our life that we will acknowledge you, that we will get to know you, that we will get to experience you, and that we will trust in you. Thomas believed because he's seen you. But God, I pray that all of us in here that have not seen you face to face, but God, you said that we are more blessed because we believe of whom we have not seen. God, I pray that your 
your word will be alive with us for the remaining of our lives. God, help us to continue to grow in you and help us to keep believing that you will take care of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. See you.